and I'm quickly going to cause you all to have nightmares. Sweet. Well, for, for those of you that are unfortunate enough to use Windows at work, uh, or have Java experience, then this, this talk is for you. Uh, because this is JRuby on Windows. Uh, more specifically, deploying production apps to Windows with you JRuby. Like a virtual machine or something? <laughs> no, no. This machine. <laughs> If you had to use Java, why would you do it on Windows? And B, if you had to use Windows, why would you then also use Java? <laughs> because there's not a very easy way to get Rails to run on Windows without using Java. Okay. Otherwise, you have to register your own services, and then you have to write watchdogs for it, because obviously it's Windows. It's going to crash and lock up and burn. And reboot the install service packs. Yeah. In the middle of doing work. So it's Windows. You really just want to do as little as you have to with it. So I, I got my joke. <laughs> I've got this little app, and uh, fortunately, I realized I shouldn't show you real data in it, so I made some seed data uh, that displays calls. And it's pretty gross because uh, it has like a deduplicator in it. Because the way it works is somebody uploads a CSV file, which is a whole nother can of worms. Yeah. <laughs> uh, because especially if you have Windows users uploading CSV files, you never really know what encoding they're going to be in. Uh, so there's this nice little gem called uh, Chartet. Uh, if you're using JRuby, you should use R Chartet, which is Chartet written in Ruby. And you can do this detect, read the first little bit of the file. If it knows what encoding it is, use it. If it doesn't, blow up in their face and be like, what are you doing to me? Because, you know, they might have uploaded a binary or something. Uh, and then you can just pass that to Icon. I can be and off you go. And, no, and nobody say how gross it is that I am loading that whole thing in memory. But in uh, using Ruby on Java, there's a couple things that you need. You need something to make it into a Java file and you have to use the Java database adapters. So they're all much nicer than they were years ago. So instead of having to have like five gems required, you can just do Active Record, JDBC, <coughs> and then whatever your regular database adapter is, dash adapter. So, you know. Normally that would just gem SQLite 3 or SQLite Ruby or whatever it is. But no, it has to be this monstrosity. And then I'm using Warbler to make nice little compiled war files. Uh, well, they're not very nice and they're not very little. But they're war files and they work. So, yeah, I mean, this is, a, this is an app with two controllers and three total controller actions, Rails 309, and the war file is 33 megabytes. But it does include SQLite 3 inside of it, so, you know, you get to ship SQLite 3 with your app every time you have to update a label. Can you not have... <coughs> stuff in an external jar. Just <coughs> well, so you can. 
I don't actually want to know what we're doing. <laughs> <laughs> I just wanted to ask the question because that sounds like by a lot of water. <laughs> yeah. So I've got mine set up to compile all <laughs> compile all the Ruby files to Java classes and include a jar of all the gems because I don't really want to be responsible for something getting messed up. So this is entirely self-contained. It even contains a blank database. Yeah. When it comes to war files, you either want absolutely everything in there so you can't possibly mess up deployments, or you need to let Maven come into your house and like wreck up the place for <laughs> weeks. <laughs> yeah. But, but once you get Maven working, like if that's possible, <laughs> It's that's really that's not a joke though. That's also like a fun game. Yeah. The maven's good. Once no, that no, that if you get it working, it's it's it's, it's, it's not, not uh, any fun. Much. But it's I have more faster. Right. Well, if you get it working, early, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> but uh, this is the warbler config file, and uh, you know you may as well throw executable in here. Doesn't seem to make it any bigger. Uh, and then all you can, all you gotta do is Java dash server your war file, and you've got a web server running, uh, which is, you know, I don't know. Some people use that, I guess. It's in here. Um, and then you give some directories, so all your code needs to be in there, as well as any directories that need to exist for the app to run. Uh, and then it'll put those in the war file too. So again, everything needs to be in there. Or you'll be chasing your tail for a long time. Also, inside of the war file you don't have break or anything, so you, you need some way to update your database. If it's a small app, just ship a whole database with it. Uh, and, you know, use a self-contained database so that you can copy it back to your machine and migrate it if you need to. And uh, sometimes things don't work if you don't have the schema, so take that with you too. But I don't want to take all my migration files because that was dumb. And then you can exclude tasks or exclude files, so by default it excludes <coughs> your, your rake tasks. Because, well, or I guess I added that, but you know you don't have rakes, so there's no point in shipping those either. Uh, you can include additional jars. Uh, most everything that has a jar dependency in a gem has the jar in the gem. This is like a tongue twister. But so if the jar is in the gem, you don't need to include the jar again. But if it's not, then you need to cram that in there too. And you can add more just plain Java classes, so if you've got some of those you need to interface with, you can stick those in there too. Um, by default, Warbler will identify whether or not you have Bundler in your app and use that to get your gems to stick in. Otherwise, it'll guess and that won't work very well. So. Uh, you should use Bundler if you're going to use this. <coughs> and you can actually do Bundle without, so if you want to exclude your development and then test, it does that by default. So if you want to add some more stuff, you can add it. The other thing you can do is, uh, if you don't understand how Bundler works, you can add gems inside of here for production. But really you should just learn how to add production gems to Bundler and not mess with this. And if you don't want to include Rails, you can take it out. Do all sorts of stupid things. Don't do any of that. <laughs> yeah. uh, you can exclude your tests. Uh, this is actually, I think, if you're not using Bundler. And then you can change the path maps. 
Don't do that either. And then you can change your jar name. If this is supposed to be something that's the only thing on the server, name your jar, root in all capital letters, and then you don't have any weird path stuff going on. Um, and then there's more crap. And you can include more stuff. And if you're using a database like SQLite, then you don't want more rubies running. So one, tell it one. Uh, in fact, it's, it's recommended, there's this nice comment here that says, control the pool of Rails runtimes, leaving unspecified means the pool will grow as needed to service requests. It is recommended you fix that, uh, these values when running a production server, otherwise it will spin up an infinite number of Rails processes. So, but there are threads and it's not so bad. It's not like having, you know, passengers spin up 300 instances, but, you know, you can only do so much work, and they do use a couple megs each. So is it possible to write this config file in XML if it's really... <laughs> <laughs> no, there's no XML. I feel like that's something. There's no XML in this. Hey, compared to struts, this thing is tiny. <laughs> yes, that is true. So once, once you get Warble all configured, or Warbler all configured, you can uh, run Warble, and you can pass it some more stuff, but really just to configure it with that long Ruby file, and Warble will generate that Ruby file that you can then go configure. And uh, that takes um, a bit. Oh, it actually broke. That's funny. Just don't cuss. But it it uh it creates a uh, a little jar, so it's got windstone there that it downloaded and shoved in there. And uh, if you're going to actually deploy this for real and you want it to not be incredibly slow, you need the JDK instead of the Java runtime environment so that you can use java-server. So anyway, I've got this nice 32 megabyte war file and I need to deploy it to something. So, <coughs> brilliant me decided to hide all my desktop icons. But that's where my Tomcat installer is, so you still get to see all my desktop icons. And, you know, you can have the services and add, there you go, install some stuff, turn everything off, put it on port 80 because I mean, there's no point putting a proxy in front of this thing. <laughs> uh, and then it needs a JRE. Again, you want to point it at the JDK and not the JRE so that you can pass some extra options. So we'll go ahead and start Tomcat. And the path is really long, but they put this nice little thing here for you. So you can get into the folder. And they ship you a root folder with a bunch of garbage in it that you can just delete. And then you put your war file in there. And you need admin rights because it's Windows. And Tomcat will see that you put something in there, if you're lucky. Nope. Yep. So now it unzips the war file, 
and we've got some stuff in here in our apps in this folder here. Oh, no, it's not. Maybe it'll be there in a minute. No, it should be this one. There we are. So there, there's your XML. It wrote it for you. I'll open it with this atrocious text editor. Look at that. So there's your Rails environment, production. Still only 40 lines of XML. This doesn't seem enterprise enough. <laughs> oh yeah? Well, I got Internet Explorer. <laughs> that seems very enterprise enough. It's not six, though. So... <laughs> <laughs> That, that error that popped up earlier, here it is popping up again, but in production. And now I get to show you where the error logs are, because if you're going to try and do this, you're going to need to know where the error logs are. And so you go to that handy Tomcat application folder, and it's the logs, and it's this one. And they're split by day, and they're terrible to try and read. If you get to the bottom, no such file to load boot.class. Oh, well, yeah, that's not going to work. So let's take a look at this gem file. No, that looks fine. So what did I change in here? I told it to do that, <coughs> which didn't work. No, nope, that's all I changed. Um, no, that's right. Bundle install. And JRuby really isn't that slow anymore. Um, this machine kind of exaggerates its lack of speed a little bit because it's only a 1.2 gigahertz machine. So you know, the machine's just really slow. JRuby, not too bad. Oh, nope, no, nope. abstract. I don't know. Did I lose my internet? <coughs> nope. That appears the internet still works. I don't know. It's being weird now. It was working. I actually have this running in production somewhere. So somehow it's managed to get all the gems installed into to where Bundler thinks they're installed, but they're not. So actually most of these gems aren't installed. Only the ones I've manually gone back and done. Gem I Rails HP. No, I already did that one. Gem I J Ruby. Query Rails, Faster, CSV, Hamel. Wow. That should be it. By the way, I miss RVM. Yeah. Windows has an RVM type thing called PIC. <coughs> yeah. 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 Okay. I'm it. It's, it's good. Right. good. It's also cantankerous. Uh, don't use this machine ever, so. Just in general? Huh? Just in general? Yeah. That laptop? Yeah.
You know, those aren't even the right versions of those gems. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't specify the versions. <laughs> Alright. Well, that's alright. Here's a working version of this in my Dropbox. And we'll just pretend like that actually worked. Oh, I don't have Dropbox on here. Okay, maybe not. Is it under My Documents? No. Dropbox is actually not installed, and it's 30 megabytes, so I'm not going to make you sit and wait for me to download it again. Which is a shame, I actually have bug fixes that need to be deployed. I guess they're not being deployed from here. It was better to write JRuby or J, JRuby on Rails than it was to write PHP because it had to, to to deploy on Windows. Okay. On a machine that doesn't have enough RAM to run Linux in a VM. Can you just Taking part of your salary and you go to a different <laughs> box? <laughs> In exchange for happiness? <laughs> well, this was interesting for a while. <laughs> Some poor staff in here might actually have to do this for their day job. Also, uh, once you get used to JRuby, the real th the the actual threads are really handy, especially if you want to use something like Torquebox, which I was going to present on, but I couldn't get it working on anything. But it's pretty cool, because you know, if you're on Linux, you, you can use Passenger, and Delayed Job, and Cron, and you know, Unix Demons, but on Windows you don't have any of that stuff, so this is all that in one little stack for you, uh, plus it's got basically memcache built in that it uses, you use with Rails for your session stuff. Because you know sessions in a database are slow, and you know you can throw these in a cluster, and it does cool things like you can shard your memcache stuff across all your nodes, and it'll do load balancing with an Apache module. And, uh, this this prox thing is kind of cool, so you can have basically a singleton that has a run loop and you can <coughs> message to it and you can only have one of them in your whole whole production environment and then if that host dies it'll spin it up on somewhere else and then route your messages to it which is kind of cool uh, if you ever had to write something that only one of them could exist in the whole application in all of production, it does that. Uh, sounds like if you have to write that, you're doing something wrong or integrating with something terrible. <laughs> okay. 
And that just kind of goes in the vein of, just because you can do something doesn't mean you should. And it doesn't appear Warble is going to work, but we'll try one more time. But I promise, if you can get Warble to run, and you copy your war file into this folder, right here, also, Tomcat watches this folder, and if you replace that war file with a newer one, it'll redeploy it. But because I'm using SQLite for the database, that really causes problems. Because you actually can't overwrite a database that's open. At least not as a service account. So, you know, the, the only way I figured to get around that was stop Tomcat. Delete this whole thing, all of it, just go away. Oops. If you need to keep the database, copy it out first. Stick it on the desktop. I mean, because it's Windows, we don't care about being proper. not have scrolling. Anyway, good enough. I promise it works. Dave has seen it. It works. Yes, Dave has seen it working. <laughs> <laughs>